Yes, guys, come to the next one. Question number four. Given below is a summarized balance sheet of AX and TX as on 31st December 2012. TX merged with AX Limited. That means AX is the selling company, sorry, AX is the purchasing company and TX is a selling company with effect from 1st Jan 2011. And the merger is by way of purchase. He is only giving you it as a purchase method. Let's read through. Check, is there any statutory reserve on the liability side? Yes, there is an export profit reserve, which is a statutory reserve there. Continue. AX will issue 12% debentures to discharge the claims of debenture holders of TX Limited at par. That means the discharge will be at par. So TX Limited 1 lakh debentures will be paid 1 lakh debentures in AX Limited of 12% again. Non-trade investments of AX Limited will fetch 25% while those of TX Limited will fetch 18%. The profits pre-tax by AX and TX during 2009, 10 and 11 are as follows. So there are pre-tax profits of 3 years given to you. 5 lakhs, 6 lakh 50, 575 and 150, 210 and 180. Goodwill is calculated on the basis of capitalization method 20% as a pre-tax normal rate. Guys, this is also pre-tax NRR. So pre-tax NRR is given to us. So we'll compare it with pre-tax FMP. Purchase consideration is to be discharged by AX on the basis of intrinsic value per share and the company is decided to cancel the proposed dividend. Guys, when you propose a dividend, the entry is P&L account debit to proposed dividend. You will reduce the profits and you create proposed dividend. When you cancel, you just pass a reverse entry. So what happens is amount of proposed dividend gets added to your P&L then. Prepare the balance sheet of AX after merger. So first thing, when we are talking about intrinsic value, we need to find out intrinsic value per share in each company that is AX as well as TX. One such asset which is not given to us is the goodwill. So we have to value goodwill and then go for intrinsic valuation. Goodwill valuation is clearly talking about, he gave you the pre-tax profits. He is talking about pre-tax NRR given to yours as 20%. You are given <coughs> balance sheets, you can calculate capital employed. You can identify as per super profit. Is it super profits or what else method? Yeah, on the capitalization method. So it's a capitalization method through which we have to solve. So get the FMP first. Let's try to identify the FMP. Then we'll get the average capital employed. Then we will go for your final answer. Come on. FMP. I have two companies, so maintain two columns, AX and TX. There's no adjustments to profit. The first one, let's start with average profits. Check, should we take a simple average or weighted average? Three years profits are 5 lakh, 6 lakh 50 and 575. So there is no trend. We have to take a simple average of the profits. Simple average will come back to 575. TX. 150, 210 and 180. Again simple average. No trend. Again 180 is a simple average of the profits. I can't call this as FMP because if you observe on the asset side, I have something called as investments which are non-trade. So whenever I have non-trade investment, such return on non-trade investment should be deducted less return on non-trade investments. Come on. Come down below. He has given some details regarding non-trade investments. Non-trade investments of AX Limited fetch 25%. Come on. 25% of 2 lakhs is 50,000. What about TX? 18% pre-tax profits. 18% of 50,000 is 9,000. Yes, 9, Checking both, we get FMP of 5 lakhs 25,000. 1 lakh 71,000. We have FMPs with us. 
We have to go for capital employed. Can I take average capital employed? To take it to average capital employed, what do we do? We can calculate closing capital employed minus half of current year profits. Guys, but current year profits, that is 2011 profit, what he has given is profit before tax. To calculate average, we need profit after tax. Is there a tax rate given? Not given. So I can't calculate your average capital employed. Let's start, let's solve the problem by closing capital employed itself. You can't assume that there's no tax. You can't make an assumption that there's no tax because, check the liability side, there's a provision for taxation appearing there. If there is a provision for taxation which is appearing there, it means that there is a tax rate. So I can't say that, you know, assuming that the tax rate, ignoring tax rate, I'm solving the problem is not a, a valid assumption to make. So let's start solving the problem with closing capital employed itself. Get the capital employed, come on. Capital employed, I'll continue those two columns. Assets. First one is sundry fixed assets. There's no change in the values. I'll take it as 9 lakh 50 and 4 lakhs. Next, investments can't be considered because they are non trade investments. Then go for stock. 1 lakh 20,000 and 50,000. Debtors, 75,000 and 80,000. Advanced tax, prepaid expenses, this are advanced tax as a current asset, 80,000 and 20,000. Cash in bank balance. 2,75 and 1,30. I can't take prepaid expenses because the realizable value is considered as 0. Consider outside liabilities then. I'll go from bottom to top. Proposed dividend can't be considered because it is anyways written off. Provision for tax. One lakh and sixty thousand. Second one. Creditors. Forty thousand and forty five thousand. Debentures, settlement values are the same, they are issuing at par, 1 lakh again, that's it, only 3 liabilities which are outside liabilities, So my closing capital employed twelve lakh sixty thousand and four lakh seventy five thousand. FMP, you know, closing capital employed, you know, an RR is already given to us. So we can start calculating goodwill as per capitalization method.
Mean in two columns say x and tx. First one normal capital employed. FMP by NRR. FMP we already calculated. This is FMP divided by NRR. FMP by NRR, so FMP is 5,25,000 divided by 20%. So this should be 26,25,000. 1,71,000 divided by 20%. This is 8,55,000. Check your calculations once. Actual capital employed. I am considering the closing capital employed as actual capital employed. It should be taken as average actually but I cannot calculate average with the given information. So I am taking closing. These answers we have ready made. 12,60, 4,75. Sufficient to identify goodwills. Thirteen lakh sixty-five thousand and three lakhs eighty thousand. We have goodwill values, we have capital employed values, you can start valuing intrinsic values per share. Purchase consideration. Intrinsic value method. Don't start from the beginning. You can start from capital employed directly. The capital employed is we have already calculated twelve lakh sixty and four lakh seventy five. Three adjustments. First one non trade investment. Second one goodwill. Third one preferential capital. So let's start. First one non trade investments. Next one goodwill. Then, is there any preferential capital given in the question? No. So, that's it. non trade investments values are 2 lakhs and 50,000. Goodwill, we just valued it as 13 lakhs 65,000, 3 lakhs 80,000. This will give us net assets or I can also call it as net assets available to equity shareholders. There is no preferential capital. So you can directly call this as net assets available to equity shareholders. This should be 28,25,000 and this should be 9,5,000. Divided by number of equity shares. We will arrive at intrinsic value per share. Number of equity shares in AX, 7 lakh share capital, each share of 10 rupees, 70,000 number of shares. And this one, 2 lakh 50,000, 25,000 shares. Come on. Now I think you can get the intrinsic values per share. 28,25 divided by 70,000 
9,5,000 divided by 25,000. You should get intrinsic values. That is your intrinsic value 40.36 and 36.2 when you have to get PCs how do you calculate using intrinsic value method exchange ratio is equal to intrinsic value of selling company TX Intrinsic value of purchasing company AX. Don't solve, just leave it like that. 36.2 divided by 40.36. Just leave it like that. Number of equity shares to be issued. By AX Limited is equal to number of shares in TX. 25,000 shares in TX multiplied by exchange ratio 36.2 divided by 40.36 will identify number of shares to be issued. Round it off, remaining shares will call it as fraction shares. Guys, 20, 25,000 into 36.2 is again 9,5,000 only. 9,5,000 divided by 40.36. Round it off. This is two. Twenty-two thousand four hundred and twenty-three shares. For three points, some change you get. The point something we'll call it as fraction shares. Fraction shares are, they should be settled in cash. Zero point. Or nine one two or something. Let's calculate discharge of PC then. Discharge of PC split between equity share capital, securities premium because each share is issued at intrinsic value of purchasing company and finally cash. Equity share capital, how many shares? 22,423 shares. Each share in AX is 10 rupees. 2,24,230 Securities premium 22,423 shares Each share should be issued at The intrinsic value of purchasing company 40.36 So 30.36 is the securities premium on it Rounded off dice, 6,80,762. Cash, 0 0.1912 into issue price per share, 40.36. It should be equal to 8. I'll tell you how I wrote 8 because the total PC should be equal to net assets of selling company. What is the total intercepts of selling company? 9 lakh 5. Same 9 lakh 5 I should get. So I just wrote the balancing figure as 8. You will get something 7 point change or something you can round off to 8. Without hesitation it is a purchase method. Reason number 1 he has already given in the question. 
that it is a purchase method. Reason number two, you went and valued goodwill. So goodwill was a revaluation of a particular asset. So when you are valuing goodwill, it becomes a purchase. So right, amalgamation, nature of amalgamation and method of accounting. Use your head. Purchase method. What is a working note that we need when, uh, when we are talking about purchase method? We need to talk about identifying goodwill or capital reserve. How do we identify goodwill or capital reserve? Compare your PC and net assets. What is the net assets taken over? Net assets taken over is 28 uh, 9,5,000. Net assets have taken over. Net assets of TX limited 9,5,000. What is your total PC? 9,5,000. So if you remember, in the, after the first question itself, I told you, there's a logic. Whenever you're calculating PC as per net assets method and your nature of amalgamation is purchase. There we were talking about nature of amalgamation being merger. Now I'm talking about purchase. Then the value of goodwill is not zero. The value of goodwill is the same value what you have included in net assets valuation. So the same 3,80,000, whatever you have included in net assets valuation will be the value of goodwill. So write down that. We'll just formulate a small thing. If your PC is calculated as per net assets, and if your amalgamation is by merger, sorry, amalgamation is by purchase. So actually comparing PC and net assets taken over, it should be zero. Goodwill should be zero, but I'm saying that goodwill is equal to whatever goodwill you have included in computation of net assets. What was the goodwill that you included in net assets? 3 lakh 80. That is only the goodwill. Goodwill is equal to goodwill included in computation of net assets. There we generalized one rule with merger. Now I am generalizing one rule with purchase. Both the cases PC should be calculated as per net assets method. Then only you can generalize this. Don't wait for me. Go for the balance sheet. Go for the balance sheet but use your brain a little bit. Slightly use your brain. Observe all rules and give.
बैलेंस शीट ऑफ एक्स लिमिटेड एज ऑन वन वन टू स्टार्टिंग विद योर इक्विटी एंड लाइबिलिटीज shareholders funds share capital only equity share capital existing there already existing share capital in ax is 7 lakhs plus new equity share capital check the discharge that will make it 9 lakh 24230 Reserves and surplus. The first reserve I should get there is securities premium. What is the value of securities premium? Check your discharge. Six lakh eighty thousand seven sixty two. But, but, on this side I find preliminary expense is the first utilization of securities premium. Order the five utilization in securities premium. One of the utilization is utilization against writing of your preliminary expenses. Right of the ten thousand, the balance securities premium that I can take is only six lakh seventy thousand seven sixty two. Next one is your general reserve. It is amalgamation by nature of purchase. I will not take over the reserves of selling company. So three lakh fifty thousand straightforward. Only the purchasing company reserve. Next one is your P&L. Careful when you are writing the P&L because proposed dividend is being cancelled. When proposed dividend is declared, you reduce P&L. When it is cancelled, you increase P&L. Then the surplus will become two lakh ten plus one lakh forty, three lakh fifty. Then comes your statutory reserve, export profit reserve, compulsory to be taken over even for the selling company. The total will be one lakh ten. When I am taking over the export profit reserve of the selling company, and if it is amalgamation by nature of purchase, then definitely I will get an amalgamation adjustment when you have to write your liability uh, assets. Non-current liabilities. One non-current liability existing there is twelve percent debentures settled at par two lakhs. Current assets, sorry, current liabilities. Three current liabilities. First one. Creditors, simple addition is sufficient. Eighty-five thousand. Provision for tax. Okay, only two guys. There's no proposed dividend. Tax provision. Add both of them. One lakh sixty. Story ends. Then come to the assets. Under assets, first one, non-current assets. Under non-current assets, tangible fixed assets. A sum total of both nine lakh fifty plus four lakhs is thirteen lakhs fifty thousand. Next, intangible assets. We have taken over the goodwill of selling company. Selling company's goodwill is only three lakh eighty. Purchasing company's goodwill will not come into the books of accounts. This is self-raised goodwill. I can't take this. 
But 3 lakh 80 I paid PC, so it is a purchased goodwill. Other non current assets. The first one is investments, and the second one is amalgamation adjustment. Investment sum total of both is two lakh fifty. Amalgamation adjustment only for the statutory reserve of selling company taken over. Selling company's export profit reserve taken over is forty thousand. Not for the entire export profit reserve because already existing is seventy thousand. What you have taken over from the selling company is only forty. That's it. Come to your current assets. First current asset is stock. One lakh twenty plus fifty. One lakh seventy. Second one is debtors. Seventy-five plus eighty, one fifty-five. Third one is advance tax. The sum total of both is one lakh. Finally, cash and bank balance. You need to reduce it by the eight rupees of PC paid in cash. My total one should be. Actually, four lakh five thousand. But instead of writing four lakh five, I need to reduce that eight rupees now. So I'll write it as four lakh four thousand nine ninety two. Twenty-eight lakh Yes, guys. Let's check for the next one. Twelfth one. Sorry. The question number five.
Smith Limited is considering buying the business of B Limited and the final accounts for the last three years is as follows. So he has given you some final accounts. Balance sheet as well as a draft p &L is given to you with net profits indicated below. Smith Limited wishes to offer or the offer to be based on the trading cash flows rather than book profits. By trading cash flows, it is meant that it is cash received from debtors less cash paid to creditors and for business expenses together with an allowance for an average expenditure on fixed expenditure, fixed assets of 15,000. So it is debtors collections minus whatever you paid to creditors minus whatever you paid for business expenses minus additional elements of 15,000 every year for fixed, fixed assets. The actual expenditure on fixed assets is to be ignored as is any cash received or paid out of issue of shares or redemption of debentures. So do not consider actual expenditure on fixed asset. Do not consider any cash flows from issue or redemption of shares and debentures. Smith Limited wishes that the trading cash flows are to be calculated for each year 2009, 10 and 11. And for these to be combined using a weights of 20%, 30% and 50% for those 3 years to give average trading cash flows. So he has given you the weights as 20%, 30% and 50%. Smith Limited considers that the average annual cash flows should, should show a return of 10% on the investment. So it's a capitalization rate of 10% divided by 10% after you get average cash flows and that will be your purchase consideration. You are supposed to calculate what are the trading cash flows, the weighted average cash flows and the price which they can pay. So it's based on cash flows guys so we need to calculate trading cash flows. And very clearly he is talking about saying that trading cash flows he meant collection from debtors minus payments to creditors minus payment for business expenses minus average elements of 15,000 rupees for fixed assets during each year. Actual expenditure on fixed assets each year is to be ignored as is any cash flows either on issue of shares or debentures or on redemption of shares or debentures. So we have to ignore these values and consider or calculate what are your trading cash flows. So what we'll try to do is let's fight start to calculate the first bit of it that is the trading cash flows. Trading cash flows. How many years trading cash flows we need? Three years. 2009, 2010, and 2011. And what did he mean by trading cash flows? Can you just repeat? First one is collection from debtors. It should be reduced by less payments to suppliers another reduction less payments for business expenses And finally, less fixed assets. Every year fixed assets should be considered as 15,000 only. No change each year. Every year I'll have to consider it as 15,000. This will give me Trading cash flows. So I need to fill up one, two, three, three figures. First one collection from the task, payment to suppliers, payment for business expenses. I'll get the trading cash flows. Come on, let's start with the first one. Collection from debtors. How 
How do we calculate collection from datas? You know sales, you know opening datas, you are also given closing datas. Assuming that there is no discount allowed, there is no bad debt in this question, we can directly calculate that. How do you calculate? Collection from datas is opening datas plus sales. Less closing credit, less closing debtors. Let's try to place the figures now. Opening debtors, 2009 opening is 2008 closing. So debtors of 2008 closing debtors are 21,000. 2010 opening is 2009 closing, 24,000. 2011 opening is 2010 closing, 26,000. Plus sales. Add up the sales. Sales are 2 lakhs. 1 lakh 90,000. And 2 lakhs 24,000. Reduced by the closing datas, 2009 closing datas are 24,000, 10 closing datas is 26,000 and 11 closing datas is 28,000. Fill up, this is collection from datas, 197, 188, 2,22. Place the figures in the above working note 197, 188, and 2 lakhs 22. Let's fill up the other figures. What is the next one to be filled up? Payment to suppliers. How do you get payment to suppliers to be filled up? Opening creditors plus purchases minus closing creditors. Fill it up. Opening creditors, check last year's closing creditors is current year opening creditors, 11,000 for 2009, 13,000 for 2010 and 14,000 for 2011. Purchases, where are the purchases? Check your P&L, materials consumed. Is it purchases? It is not purchases. It is materials consumed. I can't fill up purchases straightforward. I have to identify what will be the purchases having the materials consumed figure there. How do I get? Material consumed is nothing but cost of goods sold. How do you get cost of goods sold? Opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. From that formula can I identify purchases? Yes. How do you identify purchases? Materials consumed plus closing stock minus opening stock should give you purchases but let's see do I have opening and closing stocks yes I have when I have stock in trade I can identify your opening and closing stocks from that so you can't directly write materials consumed you need to identify purchases to identify purchases let's place another purchases now number this because C is actually business expenses. 
maintain those three years as it is 2009, 2010 and 2011 come on start with materials consumed add closing stock less stock already there opening stock this is your identified purchases materials consumed I can directly place the figures 2009 1 lakh 2010 95,000 only last year is 1 lakh 12,000 closing stocks pick up the closing stocks 2009 closing stock given in the balance sheet is 17,000 10 closing stock is 18,500 11 closing stock is 21,000 opening stock is last year's closing 2009 2008 closing will be your opening stock what is 2008 closing? 2008 closing is 16. Reduce, reduce this. 17,000. 2008 closing stock is 2009. 2010 closing stock is 2011. 18,500. With that, we get the purchases values. First case, 1,1,000. Second case 96500. Third case 1 lakh 1500. 1 lakh 1400. Place your figures under purchases. 1 lakh 1000. 1 lakh 1400. Closing creditors. On closing creditors, check your liability side. 13,000, 14,000, another 14,000. Should be reduced. We'll identify payments to my suppliers or the payment to creditors. First case 99,000. Second case 95,500. Third case 1,14,500. Place the values. 99,000 payment to suppliers. 95,500. Finally 1,14,500. Payment for business expenses the next one. The expenses in your P&L is not actually paid because I need to take the treatment for opening and closing outstanding as well as prepaid. So let's get the expenses paid now. In normal sense when I talk about expense in P&L I will write it like this expense paid plus closing outstanding because that is not yet paid minus closing prepaid. Last year it was already paid, it is a current year expenditure, so we deduct it plus opening prepaid. Minus opening outstanding. This will give me expenditure in PL account. What is the expenditure already paid? Current year expenditure unpaid. What is paid in the current year for the next year? That is not current year expenditure. So I am deducting it because it is already included in expenses paid. Paid during the year for the next year. So closing prepaid. Add opening prepaid. Paid in the previous year for the current year. That is not included in expenses paid. So I am adding it now. Minus opening outstanding. It was last year's payable. It will be paid in the current year. 
that means it is included in the expenses paid so I am deducting it because it is an expenditure of last year that will give me expense in PNL now I know expenditure which is given in the PNL but I need to know what is the expenditure paid how will you give formula I will start with expenses in PNL then add opening outstanding less closing outstanding exact reverse signs you have to apply less opening prepaid add closing prepaid Finally, we'll arrive at what is the expenditure paid during the current year. Fill up. PNL expenses, business expenses are eighty thousand. Eighty thousand again. Last year being eighty-two thousand. Opening outstanding. Last year's closing is current year's opening. Check below. Accrued business expense on the liability side. Last year's closing is three thousand. Next, it is three thousand five hundred. Next, it is four thousand five hundred. Less closing outstanding. Current year's closing balances: three thousand five hundred, four thousand five hundred, and three thousand two hundred. This should be reduced. Is closing outstanding include in current year's expenses, but they are not paid during the current year. Less opening prepaid. Last year's closing prepaid is current year's opening prepaid. Thousand reduce. Five hundred reduce. Two thousand reduce. Add closing prepaid. Five hundred. Two thousand and thousand. This is business expenses paid during the current year. Seventeen nine thousand in the first case. Eighty thousand five hundred in the second case. Two thousand three hundred in the third case. Fill up the values. Check if trading cash flows are right. Four thousand, seven thousand, and ten thousand two hundred.
negative 3000 guys positive 7 10 down 200 This, this will answer the first part of the question. What is the second part of the question asking? The second part of the question is asking us to calculate what is the weighted average trading cash flows. He has given you the weights. The weights are to be given as 20%, 30% and 50% and he is asking you to calculate. Come on. Weighted average trading cash flows 20%, 30%, and 50%. 20% of 2009, 4000. 30% of minus 3000. And finally, 50% of 10,200 last year's cash flow. And my average trading cash flow is 4,400. I think this is 4,400. No. I think this is 5,000. Check exact 5,000 I guess. Now what is he talking about in the last one? Last question is what is the price limited that Smith would offer to the business? Smith limited last line is saying Smith limited consider that the average annual trading cash flow should show a return of 10% on the investment. This should be 10% of the investment. So what is the price? So the offer price of Smith capitalize it at 10%. Offer price should be 50,000. Turn to the sixth question, guys. Balance sheet of Subashish Private Limited is as under some nice, neatly drafted balance sheet is given to you. A holder of ten thousand equity shares of a company. Agree to sell these shares at a value based on the above balance sheet. Subjected to the adjustments in the valuation given. Yes. So the leasehold property was acquired on 1-4-2000 and the balance sheet date, the lease has a further 6 years to run. The cost should be written off over the term of the lease on by equal annual charges. And until date... 
only 7000 per annum has been written off. Guys, just check when did the lease start on 1-4-2000. What is the balance sheet date? 2010. So that means 10 years is already done. And he's saying, as on the balance sheet date, it had further 6 years to run. So what is the total lease term? 16 years. What is the total cost? Check leasehold properties. Total cost is actually 160. Over 16 years, if I write off, actually every year I should write off 10,000. But how much did he write, write off till date? 7,000 per annum has been written off every day, every year. So that means 3,000 every year short written off as far as your leasehold premise is concerned. In 2007-8, goods costing 6,000 per purchase were included in the stock at cost in the, balance, in the stock list. These goods were valueless on the balance sheet date. So on the balance sheet date of 2017 itself, you can consider these as valueless. An expense credit R of 3750 of the current year has been omitted to be recorded from the books. A general reserve of 10% on the debtors after a specific provision of doubtful debts has been made for the first time in the current year accounts. Goodwill is to be valued at 2 years purchase of average profits after the above adjustments for 3 years 7, 8, 8, 9 and 9, 10. Guys, average profits method, just take, take the average of 3 years profits and multiply it by 2. That's it. No super profits method, no NRR required. Profits given before appropriations, but before providing preference dividend are 80,492, 900 and 89,650. Calculate the total consideration payable to the vending shareholder. The vending shareholder, right after the balance sheet, he holds 10,000 shares. So, if I calculate value per one share, multiplied by 10,000, we will get the answer. So, it's more of a valuation question which we are taking up guys. So, let's start. Go for valuation of goodwill. For valuing goodwill, you need FMP. You don't need capital employed guys here. It's just average profits multiplied by 2. Average profits method. Go on guys, we have 3 years profits given, you can start with that, there are some adjustments to be done each year. Valuation of goodwill. Average profits method. Yes guys, go on. First, 2007-8, and 2009-10. Three years profits are given to us. We can start with that information given. Profits given. These profits are before appropriation and providing preference dividends. 80,400, 92,900, 89,650. Ignore taxation guys. We can't take taxation without a percentage which is given and there is no provision for taxation also in the balance sheet which will make it really difficult to check what is the tax. Go from the first adjustment regarding point number B. The first adjustment will be regarding leasehold property. Depreciation to be charged should be 10,000. 
actual charge for depreciation is only 7000. That means extra depreciation of 3000 should be charged every year. Next, second one, stock. Goods costing 6000 were purchased and have been included in the stock at cost in the stock list. Okay, then these goods are considered to be valueless on the balance sheet date. On which balance sheet date, I leave it to you. Either you can take it as 7-8 or you can take it as the current balance sheet date that is 9-10. Either you can put it here or you can take it into 9-10. Anything is fine. What do we assume? Let's take it as 9-10. So put it in the current year because it was already included in 2007-8. Last year's closing stock to be reduced by 6,000. If suppose, if I am giving an adjustment as if that stock was valueless on the balance sheet date of 2007-8 itself, then I have to, have, have to start like this. Closing stock, opening stock adjustment. It is valueless at the end of 2007-8, so 6,000 reduced here. But there is nothing to be done with the opening stock. The 6,000 will become opening stock of next year. And also is included in the stock list it seems. So even in the closing stock as well. Reduction in closing stock. Sorry. Opening stock will add profits. Or adjustment will look something like this. Because since it is already included in the stock list every year. What is happening? The 6000 is included every year. So every year's closing stock should be reduced. And what is its counter in, on the opening stock? Opening stock decreases. Profit increases. So basically you will only be reducing 2007-8 profit. That is sufficient. Okay. But normally we write it like this. I will leave it to you. No problem. Anything is fine. Based on your assumption guys. Continue. Next adjustment is point number D. Expense creditor. What is an expense creditor? Expense creditor is nothing but Outstanding expenses. Which year? Current year 3750. I forgot to provide this 3750. So it should reduce my current year profits. Next. A general provision of 10% on the total debtors after a specific provision of doubtful debts has been made for the first time in the current year accounts. So add it back. General provision on debtors. So the debtors which you see there is 90%. What is 100? What is 10%? 40,500 40, into 10 by 90 is 4,500. Provision no longer required. So add the PNL. Add to the profit. What else? That's it. Close it off. Seventy one four hundred. Oh, I'm sorry, one second. Uh, this part I'm talking about. Ha. Eighty thousand four hundred minus three thousand seventy seven four hundred. Minus three thousand again. Eighty nine nine hundred. Eighty nine nine hundred. Minus three thousand minus twelve thousand seven fifty plus four thousand five hundred. Answer is 81,400. Read the point for goodwill. Goodwill is to be valued at two years purchase of average profits after the above adjustments and such profits being those available for dividend for equity shareholders. First take average profit, then deduct preference dividend. 
then you will get average profits available to equity shareholders. There is no trend. Average profits. Get the value. Reduce less. Preference dividend. That will give us average profit <coughs> available to equity shareholders. Goodwill is two years purchase of this. Then you can place the value. What is the value of preference dividend? 8% dividend on 2 lakh share capital will be 16,000. Or what is the average of the profits? Eighty-two nine hundred. Or this will be sixty-six nine hundred. One thirty-three eight hundred. That is two years purchase of average profits available to equity shareholders. Read point A again. How is he valuing shares? Shareholder of 10,000 equity shares of company agreed to sell these shares at a value based on the balance sheet value, balance sheet value subjected to the adjustments of the valuation. So based on the balance sheet valuation in the sense we need to go for net assets method. So go for the net assets method guys, balance sheet value is nothing but net assets method. But there are adjustments to the current year items. One adjustment to leasehold property, one adjustment to stock, one adjustment to outstanding expenses, one adjustment to debtors plus goodwill. This is also there. Value per share based on net assets method. Net assets method, balance sheet value, intrinsic value, breakup value, everything means the same. Let me start with this. First one is assets. First one is goodwill. Goodwill, I will not take the balance sheet value. I will take the valuation which is just done. 1,33,800. Second one. Leasehold premises. Leasehold property. Six years to run. 10,000 every year. So my total value of leasehold premises should be only 60,000. Next. Plant and missionary no change in the value. I can directly take the value of 2,25. There is nothing which is given for plant and missionary there. Investments, no change. 4 lakhs. Next, stock. Guys, one second. Stock should be reduced by 6,000. Don't forget that. So, this should be only 76,500. Next, debtors. Add back the general provision of 4,500. This will come up to 45,000. Bank balance, no change. 1,57,000. That is your total of your assets. Reduce your outside liabilities now. Go from bottom to top. First outside liability is bank loan. One 
1 lakh next one creditors Forty-nine This will give us the figure of net assets, guys. But I am valuing equity share, so I need net assets available to equity shareholders. Oh yeah, guys. One second. Yes, there is an outstanding expenses of three thousand seven fifty to be included in the creditors. Chap. Add 3,750 to the creditors of 49,750. That should become 53,500. And this is 153,500. Forgot about that outstanding creditors, guys. Outstanding expenses are supposed to be added. And my value of total assets is. So my net assets will be 9 lakhs 43,800. This is net assets. I am valuing equity share. I can't use net assets. I need net assets attributable to equity shareholders. So reduce the preference share capital of 2 lakhs. Two lakhs preference share capital reduce. Balance should be net assets attributable to equity shareholders 743800 divided by number of shares i did not reduce preference dividend Proposed, I did not reduce proposed dividend with a simple reason, assuming that the preference, preference dividend is already paid. Because if you clearly observe, if the preference dividend is proposed, it should have been shown under the liability side as proposed dividend. And he never said that the preference dividend is proposed now. So when these two informations are not available, there is no point of reducing preference dividend at all. But if it was included as a liability, definitely preference dividend should be reduced in identifying net assets attributable to equity shareholders. Number of equity shares are 50,000. And I think value per share is simple from here. Value per share is 14.876. Actual question is not value per share. The actual question is what is the total consideration to Vednik shareholder? My total consideration to my vending shareholder. That shareholder in point number one, point number A, if you observe, he holds 10,000 shares. Each share based on val balance sheet value is 14.875876 should give you 1,48,760. Pure valuation based question guys. And let me tell you one more thing. Even if you have taken stock valuation this way, your answer will not change. Your answer won't change even if you are taking that way. 